Hello, Will here again. Today I'm going to be going over the, some of the differences between what I refer to as the four computing majors at UIUC. Electrical engineering, which I refer to as EE. Uh, computer engineering, which I will refer to as COMPE. Computer science, which I will, and the engineering college, which I will refer to as CS, or straight CS. And computer science plus X, which is in the liberal arts and sciences college, which I will refer to as CS plus X. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the term CS plus X, it is simply a group of majors that is primarily computer science with another major kind of mixed in, like math, statistics, astronomy, linguistics, etc. There's even a crop sciences one, which is CS plus CS, which is <laughs> pretty fun. Um, I would generally be referring to this group of majors as one major, CS plus X, in this video, and I will go into more detail about this major later in the video. One thing before we get started, I studied Compi at UIUC from 2016 to 2020, uh, so you're aware of any bias that I might show in the video. Many of you probably clicked on this video to see which is the hardest, so I will get that answer right away. Generally speaking, CS plus X is the easiest, followed by CS, then Compi or EE, depending on who you ask. A Compi major will probably say that EE is the hardest, while an EE major will generally say that uh, Compi is the hardest. Uh, keep watching to hear why. The order in which I originally listed the four majors is important. Uh, they can be thought of as on a spectrum of computing level of abstraction. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the terms low level and high level, uh, this does not actually refer to the difficulty, um, but rather computing level of abstraction, where the lowest levels are more simple computing, uh, like a circuit with logic gates or even just some transistors controlling an LED. Uh, these types of things almost have no computing abstraction. Uh, higher levels typically refer to a program written for a computer with an operating system. Uh, and that's what most people would think of when they think of coding. Um, with the highest level um, being things like Google Apps Script, uh, which has such a high level of, of abstraction that you can write to a spreadsheet with just a single line of code. So, with transistor logic at one end of our spectrum and Google Apps Script at the other end, where do the four majors fall? I'll be using a box and whisker graphing method, uh, where the box will denote uh, disciplines uh, where a student can wholly specialize. Uh, most of the degree can be focused around this area, and the whiskers on either or both sides will uh, denote where a student can gain significant, uh, around 10 or so credit hours uh, of exposure. We will begin with electrical engineering. Um, EE's box will be from transistor logic all the way to physical chip design uh, with a right whisker extending to operating system design. This is due to EE students' ability to take as few as three or as many as seven or eight computing classes. EE is also different from the other three majors in that it is not limited to computing. Uh, EE also involves topics that are not com included in our computing spectrum such as power engineering and component design. Think solar panels, wind turbines, Tesla coils, batteries, etc. And uh, light device design. Uh, think LEDs, radio communications, and again, solar panels. Uh, outside of computing classes, EE and Compi students are both required to take one chemistry course, four physics courses, uh, two of which are half semester, so three semesters of physics, calculus one through three, and differential equations. So four total math courses, uh, this is a major contributor to the degree of, or to the difficulty of both degrees, as taking mid-level courses um, in difficult subjects, which you are probably not very interested in, is quite hard. Uh, this is also why Compi students uh, say EE is harder and vice versa, as they are not interested in the other major's subject material nearly as much as they are their own. Um, so that would make the other major seem harder. Um, if you really like electricity or chip design and enjoyed high school physics, electrical engineering might be for you. The next on our list is Compi, um, or computer engineering, which along with electrical engineering makes up the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering at UIUC. Compi is by far the most versatile along this spectrum, um, not in general, just along this spectrum. Um, as its box extends from physical chip design to cloud programming and distributed systems, and its whiskers cover the entire spectrum. Uh, this flexibility results from Compi students being able to choose from a wide variety of topics to fulfill upper-level degree requirements. I think this flexibility is one of the biggest pros of the major, 
as I had no idea what I wanted to study um, when I entered college. And I imagine, um, I had no idea what I wanted to study within computing when I entered college. And I imagine many others feel the same way. Uh, Compi students are only required to take three EE specific courses, uh, but can take up to six. If you are interested in how computers, operating systems, and devices work, uh, or just generally are interested in engineering and programming, uh, Compi might be for you. Moving on to CS, we again move to the right on our spectrum. CS's box ranges from operating system design to somewhat high level topics such as distributed systems, cloud computing, and database design. It has a right whisker which extends to the end of the spectrum. CS students are not required to take any courses below the level of computer architecture, but may take up to four EE courses if desired. So this would theoretically allow students to gain significant exposure in an area below uh, the level of computer architecture, uh, but it would requ require significant planning ahead of time and would make the degree much harder, uh, harder than EE and Compi. Um, so for this reason, um, CS's uh, left whisker extends only to computer architecture. CS majors are required to take two physics courses, calculus one through three, linear algebra, and an additional science elective. Uh, this is significantly easier uh, than the Compi and EE STEM gen ed requirements, uh, yet it is still, um, these classes are still quite difficult. If you really like programming and don't particularly care for physics or chip design, uh, CS is most likely for you. Finally, we arrive at CS plus X. This is the highest level of all of the majors and also the least flexible. The group of CS plus X majors together are the most diverse and flexible, but uh, we're going to be only looking at this from the perspective of somebody studying a single CS plus X major, which uh, anyone taking um, a CS plus X major will be doing. Flexibility is low due to the fact that specialization is sort of determined at the time of major selection. Uh, CS plus math and CS plus stats are definitely more flexible than the rest, but something like CS plus astronomy essentially requires you to specialize in computing applications for astronomy. This isn't necessarily a bad thing, but requires the student to know more precisely what they want to do when entering college, which is unrealis unrealistic for many, if not most, students. Uh, it definitely was not realistic for me. Um, CS plus X box covers only the higher level um, topics on the spectrum, since um, much of the curriculum will be about uh, specific applications to the X part of the major. It has a right whisker that extends to the operating system, or that extends to operating system design. Since CS plus X majors are in LAS and not engineering, LAS meaning Liberal Arts and Sciences College, uh, STEM gen eds are not required, so no physics or chemistry required here. Math requirements will vary depending on the specific major, so if you're taking something like CS plus math or CS plus stats, you're obviously going to have to take a lot more math um, than somebody that's taking a something like CS plus crop sciences. Um, uh, so this is why CS plus X is easier, or a large part of why CS plus X is easier than the rest of the majors um, that I've listed so far. Um, but uh, it's still a difficult major, so don't don't get me wrong there. If you like programming and one of the X topics um, offered among the uh, CS plus X majors is quite interesting to you. Um, and, or you just don't like science at all and you like programming, um, CS plus X is most likely for you. I hope you found this video informative. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments. I generally respond to all comments. Uh, one last bit of advice for high schoolers before I end the video. Do not let this video scare you away from any of these majors. Um, just because something is hard uh, does not mean you will not be able to do it. Um, you, but it is imperative that you are interested in the major that you choose. Um, I'll likely make another video discussing this in much more detail um, along with imposter syndrome uh, sometime in the future. Thank you for watching.